Hey guys, Jam here and welcome back to another video. And in today's video, I'm going to try and kibash my own version of the Space Marine 2 limited edition Captain Titus. I'll put it up on the screen here right now. Now, a kind of funny story, I started making this model probably over a year ago, just before the original release date of this game, but then obviously they postponed it and all that kind of stuff, so I just kind of held on to this video. And yeah, finally getting it out for you guys. I'm super excited to play the game. By the way, this is not sponsored at all. I'm just like incredibly hyped. I loved the first game years and years ago. And this looks like it might be the best 40k Warhammer game we've ever got from all everything I've seen. So yeah, I'm going to quit jibber jabbering and let's get straight into this kid bash. Now, like I said at the beginning of this video, I started this quite a long time ago before all the trailers and everything came out. There was the one kind of teaser trailer that came out and I had to study that thing to kind of get the details and stuff like that on Titus. And with that, I started with this kind of front and rear loincloth kind of things he's got going on. Now as for the body, it's just the Assault Intercessor Sergeant body. And then for the loincloth, you can just use green stuff, but I had a little bit of green putt, which is like a mix of green stuff and milliput lying around from a project I was working on just before I started this. So I just roll it out like with my paintbrush like a rolling pin making sure it's not too thin not too thick just so you get a nice bit of strength in there then all i did was i cut it into a kind of loin cloth shape that i wanted going back and forth and cutting a bit more if i needed to if it was too big then i just stuck it on to the model now on the rear end of titus where i've put this loin cloth it didn't quite look right with the cloth dangling out from the armor but there was none on the side so i had to get two smaller bits stick them on the sides of that armor plating and then I just use my silicon shapers and a paintbrush to kind of smooth and blend it into the rest of the loincloth. And then later when the green stuff is kind of almost set I'll just start shaping the way I want the cloth to be blowing in the wind and everything but I don't do anything too crazy on this one just a slight bit of movement in there. Now the next step is the ultramarines U on his chest plate in the middle of the Aquila kind of thing. Now, it sounds like a simple thing, but for some reason I had quite a lot of trouble with this. But basically, I just cut a really thin strip of green stuff. And I just started slowly making kind of horseshoe shape around the skull in the middle of the aquila. And yeah, like I said, I just bent the green stuff into the right shape that I needed. And kind of slowly snipped a little bit and all that kind of stuff to make sure it wasn't too chunky. And then it just fit into place. Like I said, I'm making it sound easier than it was. It probably should have been easier, but... <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, it just took me a while to get that done. And as you can see on the screen right now, I managed to get the back loincloth kind of drifting through the air the way I wanted and the U in place. Now, as for the base, I wanted something to kind of represent what I've seen in the trailers of the game. So that kind of ruined Imperial City kind of thing. So I had this sculpted base from one of the older easy build intercessors. And yeah, this is the base I'll be using for the mod because I just thought it, it's perfect and I don't have to really do much work with it. I just had to snip a few bits on the base so the tactical rock on this guy can kind of fit in place. Now onto the main feature of this model and definitely the coolest part of the statue as well is the fact that Titus is kind of raising up a Tyranid that's been chopped in half and he's kind of like choking it out as they're both staring at each other deeply in the eyes. So <laughs> it's a... Really, really cool pose. I really digged it and I had to kind of replicate it here. So I got an old Tyranid model here and now all I'm going to do is take my little hobby saw and saw this bad boy in half. And once that's done, I kind of just go in with my hobby knife to make sure I just kind of tidy it up a little bit. But we'll be coming back later with some green stuff to make this look a bit more realistic. Then my next step was to find an open left hand for this Primaris dude and luckily I had one lying around and I just glued that straight onto the neck of this Terranid. It fit pretty much perfectly there to be honest. And then to get the arm that kind of raises it up into the air, this was straight out of the Assault Intercessor kit I believe. It's just the one that has the chainsaw up in the air and all I do now is I cut out the chainsaw and just kind of slowly and gently neaten up the little wrist area with my hobby knife. I let the glue on the arm and the hand on the neck and everything completely set so nothing comes loose and then I just glued the hand to the arm and I just kind of positioned it the way I wanted it and yeah came out pretty well. 
Right, so before I carry on with the tune, I wanted everything to kind of set again so I don't ruin anything. And I moved on to some of the weathering on the model. Now I'm mostly just focused on the big chunks of battle damage that I'm going to cut into this model. The rest will just be painted in. So once again, I went back to kind of like studying the trailer that was out at the time and I saw there was a giant kind of slash across the Ultramarine's U on the shoulder pad. So I went in with my hobby knife and just gently cut a nice little slash across there and I just put a little bit of like nicks and battle damage throughout the armor where it's kind of similar to how he looks in the game. Now for the chainsaw arm, weirdly this is quite difficult as well because I can't seem to find any right hand chainsaws anywhere apart from the one from the Space Wolves upgrade kit. But what I did here was I got an arm that I thought fit really well and I just took one of the normal assault intercessor chainsaws and I just kind of cut the hilt and the handle for that and I'll stick it to the right hand arm that I found. Which is actually the arm from the Space Wolves upgrade kit but the actual chainsaw that comes with that is a double edged chainsaw I guess you'd say and the one that Titus had is only a single edge so I had to replace it. But one thing that the Space Wolves chainsaw did have was kind of that hand guard area around the knuckles. And once again, Titus on his chainsaw has this. So I just snipped that off and later I'll just be gluing it on in the same place. Because like I said, I'm trying to get as many details down as I can. Now that everything is set, I'm going back to the Tyranid again. And one of his smaller kind of fourth arms, I guess you would say, weren't really in the right place. So I originally cut one of them off and I've just sliced and diced the joints so they kind of lean a little bit more downwards. So they're not getting like all up in his face and I just glue that back on. I used quite a bit of sprue goo on this one just to kind of fill that gap in as well. And as you can see on the screen right now, it turned out pretty well because the claw is no longer kind of obstructing his face and all that kind of stuff. Moving it down was definitely the right call on that one. Now because I originally ran out of my green part stuff, I've made up some normal green stuff now to make the loincloth. And again, I'm just using my color shapers and stuff like that to kind of press in and sculpt some folds and ripples and just move the cloth where I want it to be. Always trying to make sure that the back loincloth and the front one are kind of blowing in the same direction. And that's where we are so far. Definitely coming along. And while the green stuff was still a bit wet I decided to add a little trinket thing that hangs off of Titus's belt. It's kind of like a long box thing with some bones in it. Well, that's at least what I could find in my intercessor kit, so I've just slapped it on there. And while I've got this green stuff out, it's time to gore up our Tyranid dude by rolling out a kind of long green stuff sausage. Then I'm going to wrap that little sausage around the rim of where it was cut. And I'm going to use that now with my color shapers and I'm just going to press and blend in some of the parts of the green stuff in with the body and the shape of it all. But also kind of creating like ripples and ridges and stuff like that to kind of resemble the torn and shredded flesh at the end of this wound. Probably a bit weird but this is easily my favorite part of this whole model. I don't know. It's the first time I've ever done a wound or like guts and stuff with green stuff so it was quite fun. And speaking of guts I'm going to end up getting another three sausages of green stuff making sure it's kind of tapered and thinner on one end and I'm just going to stick that in the woundy bits it looks like its organs are kind of dangling out. Obviously doing this in various shapes and sizes and nothing too long because that might might look a little bit ridiculous. And then to add kind of more texture and more like a gutty vibe to the wound I use my color shapes and I just kind of press in some indents and kind of stipple in little dots here and there on the green stuff just to like I said add the texture and kind of lumpy fatty kind of vibe to it. And then I go ahead and grab my Tyranid head and my Captain Titus helmet which is just the standard kind of sergeant helmet here. And I wanted to glue them on at the same time using plastic glue so I've kind of got time to work with there. And that's because I want to make sure these two heads kind of line up perfectly. Once again they're supposed to be kind of staring each other down. I don't want it to be off at all so yeah. Like I said just do these at the same time, move it around, make sure everything's kind of fitting in the right place or looking in the right way. But now that that's done, I quickly slap on the chainsaw arm. Like I said, nothing too special on that one. I was just swapping out the chainsaw blade and all that. And 
Now for the shoulder pad on there, this is straight from the normal intercessors kit I believe and it just kind of has that little parchment at the bottom which I believe Titus has on there and yeah I just glue that into place. And my next step was I just glued on some little pouches and bags around his waist, nothing too special there and this is what the model looks like so far. Now one of the coolest parts of Titus in the new trailer, or should I say in the old trailer now, is the fact that he has that chain around his arm with the inquisitorial eye on it. Now I think that might have been explained in some of the new trailers, to be honest I've been trying not to watch any of the newer ones, not to spoil myself, but I hear things here and there. But anyway I get some nice small jewellery chain here and I wrap it around his arm. Now the trick with any sort of chain of models, like I've shown this in many of my videos before, is just getting some super glue, dipping a toothpick in and just running that super glue across the links of the chain and it hardens the whole thing up so the chain's not loose. As for the inquisitorial eye, luckily I've got quite a few sisters of battle models lying around and they have quite a few of these eyes dangling off of their guns and stuff like that. So all I did was I snipped one off and I just glued it to the chain. Now the last things I do on this model is one, I checked where all the purity seals and Titus were and I glued some purity seals there. And secondly, like I said earlier, I'll be adding in some weathering to the model now. Just using a little drill pin stuff to make like bullet wounds and stuff to the armor. So pretty easy stuff there. And now it's on to painting. Now obviously I start with priming this model in black. And just a side note, after you've done a kit bash, nothing is better than that priming stage when everything just kind of comes together and just makes it feel like a real full intertwined model if that makes any sense. But then my next step was to just blast the whole entire model down with McCrag blue through my airbrush but obviously you can do it with a normal brush and then I grab some non oil and then I just kind of recess shade slash pin wash all the well the recesses of this model instead of just washing the whole thing in non oil and then having to come back and layer again. This can be quite a time consuming stage but I always find it it's a little bit quicker than just like I said layering over the non oil again. But yeah I'm going to try and speed run through this kind of basing stage but I do the white base coats all in Celestra grey. So that will be the knee pad, the logo, all that kind of stuff. And then for the loin clothy bits I go in with Xandri dust. I do the purity seals in Rakoth flesh as well as the Tyranid's skin as well. And then when it comes to the carapace of the Tyranid I go in with Nagaroth Knight. And then when it comes to the gold I went straight in with Retributor Gold but also realized that it looks like I missed a step with the sergeant slash lieutenant kind of white and red strip on the helmet and that's just obviously Celestra Grey and Mephiston Red. And as for the silvers I just go with Lead Belcher. And as you can see here now I kind of went back and forth with the red and the white trying to get that stripe on the helmet nice and straight. It took me a few goes but eventually got it decent enough where I didn't want to mess with it anymore. And then for the bags and all the leathery things I went in with Mournfang Brown. Then I went in and highlighted the whites with Ulthuin Grey. I think that's how you pronounce that. Yeah I'm not going super bright with this model. I'm keeping a lot of those base coats in there and just kind of slight highlights here and there. But when it comes to the washes and stuff I use Seraphim Sepia for the loincloth and I use Agrax Earthshade for pretty much everything else. Now one thing I also don't really show you here is all the places later that I want to be covered in blood I do paint with Mephiston Red. I will be covering it with Blood for the Blood God later. But yeah onto something that's actually interesting and that was the loincloth. I mean this is a year ago now but even recently I've been experimenting with changing my painting style and doing a lot more like a textured way of doing things. But anyway, so with this loincloth I go in with Yushabti Bone and Screaming Skull and instead of just kind of edge highlighting and layering in nice smooth highlights I go with a kind of crisscross crosshatch patterns throughout to add texture and highlights throughout the cloth and I really enjoy doing this kind of method. And it's definitely something I've been experimenting with and trying to get better at as well. Obviously starting with Yushabti Bone to kind of do the most of the area and then using Screaming Skull just on the tippy top highlights. And when that was finally done I moved on to the carapace of the Tyranid and I'm going to use 
Zeres purple, I think that's how you pronounce that, and Slanesh grey as the final highlight. And again, I'm just kind of doing lots of like scuffy straight lines down the arm to kind of give it a bit more texture instead of just being kind of blank. And yeah, I think it turned out all right, as you can see here. And then for the purity seals and his skin, I just highlighted in Palette Witch Flash. Now for his claws, obviously I painted them Aberdeen black and I wanted to highlight up with greys, which is fine, but I kind of try to do that whole scratchy highlight thing on the claws and I don't think it really worked to be perfectly honest. It's something I should probably come back to and fix up at some point, but yeah, not the worst result in the world. Now on to the next kind of big important part of the model and that's back to the armor. Now I'm going to give it pretty much all over edge highlight with Kalgar blue. Again this is going to be an all over highlight but it's also going to be kind of rough and slippery in some places again to kind of give the illusion of weathering. It's a technique I like to do because it's easier than kind of giving small smooth edge highlights you can kind of just roughly stipple it in gives you more texture weathering and like i said it's just easier to edge highlight that way and then we're going to do a similar thing with finrisian gray but we're going to do it in much smaller areas kind of like the tippy top sharpest points where the light might reflect the most again kind of this like rough in some areas as well stippling it on just creating that illusion of weathering once again all right, and that was pretty much most of the painting done. I know I skipped through quite a few things here and there, but I want to make this video slightly quicker. So onto the decals or transfers, whatever you want to call them. And I went for symbols and stuff that are actually on Titus's armor. And yeah, just using my micro sole and micro set, which makes decals so much easier. I just uh, pop those bad boys on. Now, obviously, I've weathered all the armor and stuff like that, so these decals need weathering as well. So I just go back to my Kalgar Blue and Fenrisian Grey and just kind of add a little bit of scuffs and stuff across the decals just so it blends into the armor a little bit better. All right, and finally, onto the base. So I'm going to start off with Mechanica Standard Grey all over, and then I'm going to do a kind of bigger, chunkier, scratchy highlight with Dawnstone all over the base. And then again, doing the same thing, but on a smaller scale, again, just kind of like where the light will hit it the most with Administratum Grey. And then last, but certainly not least, if you look at the Collector's Edition statue thing, he's obviously in a pool of blood and body parts. So I had to go straight to Blood for the Blood God. And obviously I put the blood all around the wound where the Tyranid has been chopped in half, as you know, you've got to douse that up in a blood. But then obviously... I get quite a lot of blood for the blood god and I just soak these pools that I kind of left behind on the base and just kind of making puddles of blood everywhere. Kind of dabbing it here and there over the base but blood effects isn't something I've really used all that much and I know it'd probably make more sense for Titus himself to be splattered but I was really nervous of <laughs> ruining my paint job so I kind of left him a bit bare on that one but the base has got pools of blood. And for the chainsaw, I just kind of used slashing movements to paint streaks of blood across the blade and the chainsaw teeth and stuff like that. But with that all said and done, the model is complete. And all I got to do is paint that sweet, sweet black rim around there. And I'm going to jump to a little showcase for you guys. Well, there you have it guys in all his Captain Titus Space Marine 2 glory. Now I had a lot of fun kind of building it and painting this one-off model. Always do enjoy doing that instead of like big full army projects. But yeah, let me know what you think of this. Does it look like Captain Titus, especially that limited edition kind of statue thing that you could have gotten? And also let me know below if you'll be getting and playing the game on September 9th. Luckily, I've actually got the day off that day, so I'm hopefully going to be playing it all day long. But anyway, as you guys already know how to do all this YouTube stuff, you know, the like, subscribe, all that. I do have YouTube membership, Patreon, all that, if you want to help me keep my bits box full. Any support in any way is always really appreciated. But until the next one, guys, enjoy gaming, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.